So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. And uh, today uh, I'd like uh, to talk about microscope objectives and I'd like uh, to give you a basic introduction into this topic. And as you can see, I've uh, changed uh, my setting a little bit. Uh, my previous videos I've recorded in my little basement studio. <laughs> but uh, today I'd like to show you my desktop because uh, I can more easily uh, show you the different uh, objectives that I have um, along here. And uh, yes, most of the objectives that I brought along have have a magnification of 10 times, um, but there's also four times objective here, 40 times objective, and there are also different standards here. And in this video, I'd like to yeah, help you a little bit make sense of the different types of objectives uh, that there are. Um, let's start off uh, yeah, with the most uh, striking resemblance or similarity that many of those objectives have. And that is, is that many of them here, at least the ones that I brought along, have a yellow ring here, yellow, yellow, yellow. There's also a yellow ring over here. Um, okay, well, this one over here is blue. This one again um, has a yellow, is yellow. Um, and uh, the color uh, coding, that is the magnification of the objective. Um, so a 10 times magnifying objective, as for example, as it's printed on here, um, they're all color coded with a yellow ring. So it's more easy um, for you to see which um, objective you're using and you do not have to read um, the print uh, on the objective. And sometimes the objective is mounted in such a way that the print is pointing away from you and then you cannot even read it. And, and that's why this is a very convenient uh, um, yeah, feature and uh, it's, uh, it's standardized. Yeah? For example, here, the 40 times objectives, these are all blue and uh, four times objectives, uh, they are color coded red. Yeah, so that is uh, basically uh, yeah a similarity that many of them have here. Again, you immediately know that this must be a ten times uh, objective, and indeed here it is, uh, ten times. Okay, so uh, yeah, once we got that sorted out, um, I'd like uh, to show you now two uh, ten times objectives, um, and uh, yeah, of a very different size, as a matter of fact. So let's clean this away a little bit. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, there is a cap here that I'm going to remove as well. Okay, so for tra used for transport. And look, this one over here magnifies 10 times and this one over here also magnifies uh, 10 times. There is a significant difference uh, in size. Um, and, and the question now is, 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 is why is that? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the reason is, is that, uh, um, yeah, in this most simple case, uh, an objective only has one lens. Well, that is a theoretical minimum, but I have to tell you, I've uh, rarely seen a microscope objective that only contain one lens. And uh, yeah, in an extreme case, like, like the one over here, I don't know how many lens elements there can be in there, seven, eight, ten, yeah, um, quite a few of them. And uh, the reason is, is that uh, basically you need so many lenses elements uh, for correcting so-called lens errors. And if you have only a single lens, then this lens is not able to deliver the appropriate contrast and uh, clarity because uh, of a variety of different aberrations or lens errors like chromatic aberration and, and there's also spherical aberration and so on. And uh, all of them have, these lens errors have to be corrected and it's uh, why uh, sometimes those objectives contain many different uh, you know, lens elements. And of course, very, very cheap objectives like the one over here, which is from an introductory children's microscope Okay, um, they only contain maybe, I don't know, maybe one or two lens elements. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those uh, can be quite um, expensive and that's why they're also significantly heavier um, and also larger because of course you need simply more space uh, for inc yeah, including all of those lens elements. Yeah. So this is um, explains already that uh, evidently um, the microscope objectives uh, differ not only in their magnification but also on a variety of other factors and I'd like to yeah, talk about this um, today. So let's first uh, talk about the numbers that are printed on the objective here. Um, yeah, for example, this children's uh, yeah microscope objective doesn't even have uh, other numbers printed on here. But let's uh, I don't know. Let's take take this one over here for example, and uh, both of them again have the same magnification, uh, but the, um, in many cases uh, the following numbers are printed on here: 160, then a 0 0.17. Then of course the magnification ten times, four times, uh, forty times, whatever, and then a decimal value which goes, uh, yeah, all the way up uh, to one point two five approximately. Yeah, here um, for example, um, here it's uh, printed. There's a four printed on here, and the decimal value is uh, zero point ten. Yeah, but uh, otherwise there's nothing printed on here. Yeah. So what do those values mean? Okay. Um, so first of all, the 160 uh, refers uh, to 160 millimeters of the mechanical tube length. 
And that means that uh, microscopes that have a hundred uh, microscope objectives that have 160 printed on them can be exchanged. So for example, if I take this um, objective out and if I put this one over in, yeah, in here, it also has 160, then um, it's going to work. Okay, um, it's going to fit physically. So the threading, it's called an RMS threading, it's going to fit. Um, and um, also optically, it's going to fit. Uh, yeah, there might be some some issues uh, that I'm going to talk about later on um, concerning poor focality. But generally, you're able to exchange objectives uh, that um, are um, have 160 printed on them. Yeah, so you see, as, as a matter of fact, most of my objectives have 160 um, printed uh, on them. Yeah. Um, and even this one over here this is so, as a so-called a short barrel objective, um, which is yeah not quite compatible with the others here, <laughs> which are a little bit longer. That's something I'm also going to talk about. Yeah, and this one over here also has 160 printed on them. Yeah, so this essentially sorts out already one issue. Um, so when you go um, objective shopping, uh, then uh, you must basically uh, know: um, Are you going to take uh, an objective with 160 printed on them, or? Do you have objectives that have an infinity sign printed on them, like this one over here? Yeah, so this is a different standard. It even has uh, the word infinity printed on it. Um, in many cases, this word is not printed on, but look for the infinity sign. Okay, um, so this means that um, those objectives cannot be um, interchanged, uh, even though, even though that's the interesting thing, even though mechanically you know, the, the threading is the same, you know, it's the same size here. So uh, physically, it would actually fit on the microscope, uh, you know, if you exchange those. But uh, optically, it's not going to work. It's you're going to get a blurred image. Yeah, so you got to be careful here. But let's uh, have a look here. Um, yeah, 160. What does this mean? The mechanical tube length. Um, but this basically means the following that um, you now need an eyepiece as well. Here is an eyepiece. Yeah, that's where you look through, of course. 160 means that uh, the distance from here, from this place where it rests in the microscope. Yeah, so not, not up here, but here. Okay. Um, this, this edge over here um, to the edge of uh, where the eyepiece goes in, in, in the microscope. So it's actually rests in like this. And yeah, so we're talking about this, this corner here. This distance must be 160 millimeters. Okay, not more, not less. So it doesn't matter if your objective is large or small. For example, over here, this one is a yeah, a much smaller objective over here, but it's also a 160. It's not printed on here, but it is. <laughs> okay, um, so then it must basically um, have the same distance. Yeah, um, or for example, this uh, other short barrel objective over here, the same thing. Yeah. It really doesn't matter um, what the size of the objective itself is. Uh, we're always uh, referring to this uh, edge here where it uh, contacts uh, the microscope. And this has to be 160 millimeters. And uh, this is uh, what the 160 refers to. Yeah. So uh, what else uh, do we have written on here? The 0 0.17, this refers uh, to the thickness um, of the cover glass. Um, because um, if the cover glass is thicker or thinner, then the resolution, the clarity will drop. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, you probably don't have much choice anyway, because uh, the microscope objectives are these days are all, all have 0 0.17 millimeters of a cover glass thickness. Now, um, how do you know if your cover glasses have that thickness? Well, I will tell you right away. <laughs> um, they will have a slightly different thickness because there is a manufacturing tolerance. So some of them will be a little bit thinner, others will be a little bit thicker. It doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, you just use standard uh, yeah, microscope cover glasses and, and you'll be fine. The Acro, um, which is printed over here, um, some other companies uh, simply have an A written over here on here. Okay. And others, um, they don't have anything written uh, on it on here. But um, generally, Acro refers to achromatic objectives and all standard routine uh, microscope objectives are achromatic. And this means that uh, there is some um, yeah, color um, chromatic aberration correction. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's not uh, quite as clear as the so called apochromatic objectives, which are pretty expensive, very expensive. Yeah. Um, which are give you an even better. Uh, yeah, color reproduction. And those achromatic objectives are already pretty okay. And uh, however, in some cases, you might see some color fringes, so called chromatic aberration, where the, the edge uh, of certain specimens might be a little bit yellowish or purplish. And this is called uh, yeah, color fringing. And uh, you might still be able to see it uh, with those um, objectives. And if you don't like that, um, then you have to use more expensive objectives. Yes, we already talked about the magnification over here. And then there's another decimal value over here, which is different 
different from objective to objective, 0.65. Then this one over here, what does it have? Um, 0.25, okay. Um, here again, yeah, 0 0.65. And this refers to the numerical aperture and is a measurement of the resolution of the objective, okay. Um, you don't really have much choice here. So um, generally, um, the higher the magnification, also the higher the value. But in some cases, it might be of relevancy because um, sometimes there are, let's say, um, certain objectives, let's say 100 times um, objectives, 100 time objective, uh, which has a value of, let's say, also 0 0.65. So which one's better, a 40 times objective with 0 0.65 or 100 times objective with 0 0.65? Well, the resolution is going to be the same, okay? Um, so this means the, the sharpness of, of the image generally with all other things being equal because rem remember um, concerning the, yeah, the correction of, of chromatic aberration and, and all these other things as well is not considered in these values. Yeah? So um, so the most important value I would say um, are is the 160 um, or infinity and of course the magnification. Okay, so what does infinity mean? I already explained that, that 160 means that the distance uh, between the objective and the eyepiece must be 160 millimeters. Um, however, um, yeah, Somewhere in the 1980s, I think, uh, the larger microscope manufacturers, and especially in the 1990s, they realized that this is kind of very limiting because then microscopes cannot be larger than a certain size yeah, because this uh, distance has to be fixed. It's always 160. Yeah? Um, so this kind of limited the size of the microscopes um, a little bit. Um, and uh, that's why some companies started to introduce so-called infinity um, optics, infinity objectives, uh, which I as already mentioned, you have an infinity sign here. So you got to be careful now um, because uh, the infinity um, objectives of one company are not necessarily compatible with the infinity objectives of another company. It's really important. Um, it might not fit from the threading um, and there might also be other optical issues as well. So don't, uh, don't mix uh, objectives of different manufacturers here. But what does infinity mean? This basically means that um, when the light comes out um, of the objective, um, yeah, the specimen is over here and then it's picked up and then the light beam is not focused to a point, okay? But rather the light beams are parallel. And that means you need an intermediate tube lens which you can place pretty much anywhere where you want it to put the light beams back to a focal point and then the microscope object, uh, eyepiece can pick it up. Yeah. So this basically means because of the distance or the, the light beam is parallel here, it doesn't really matter how far away I put the objective. And this means that I can build a microscope um, with a very, yeah, which is significantly larger. And when I place filters into this parallel light beam, then this also does not change the focal point because if the light rays converge together and if I put a filter, a flat filter in it, then it actually also shifts the focus a little bit. Yeah. So generally those plan, no, those infinity objects, Objectives, they are um, can be found on more expensive microscopes. Um, all big manufacturers uh, of microscopes like uh, like uh, Zeiss, Nikon, Olympus, uh, yeah, and 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 Leica. Yeah, they all moved over to infinity to an infinity standard. But be careful once you um, are buying microscopes from one company, you got to stick to that company. You cannot simply exchange objectives. Okay, so this uh, is an important uh, difference here. Um, I'm, I'm saying this because um, I've already received emails where people were asking me, can I buy this objective for my microscope? I want to upgrade. I want to get a different magnification. And I said, look, you've got to be careful. <laughs> um, you, um, yeah, this is, you've got a, a 160 millimeter uh, microscope um, and, and you want to attach an infinity objective to it. It doesn't work. You can attach it. <laughs> it will fit. Okay. Um, but uh, it's going to be blurred. Okay. Because uh, you need this two tube lens and, and all these things. Okay. So that is um, basically um, uh, the infinity explained. Now, um, I also mentioned some of the advantages and disadvantages. Are there any disadvantages? What are some advantages of, of um, other than um, the filter issues and the size of the microscope? What are some other advantages of, of infinity microscopes? Well, one advantage is, is that um, if you buy yourself a microscope with an infinity optics, then um, you can be pretty sure already that the quality is okay. 
Yeah, um, they don't put infinity um, to my knowledge. <laughs> at least <laughs> you never know. But they don't put infinity on optics because they're more expensive. They don't put them on on um, on, on cheap microscopes. Okay, so generally you can assume that the overall quality of the mechanical quality and overall quality of the microscope is is pretty good. It doesn't mean it's really important. It does not mean that those microscopes who have um, yeah the one sixty millimeter um, standard that they're not good. Just be careful. Okay, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't mean that. So what are some disadvantages? And there are some severe, I don't know, severe. It depends what you want. But there is one severe disadvantage of, of, um, um, of those infinity objectives, especially if you buy them from a company or if you get a microscope from a company which is not very large. Um, and that is, is you might have problems finding replacements. Okay. Um, so this one over here is a 10 times. And I asked the company, do you have a 20 times objective of the same series, infinity? No, they don't have it. Okay, or 60 times they don't have it. Yeah? Um, so that is a little bit of a problem that um, um, because they're not so common, they're not manufactured in very large quantities compared to the others. Okay, um, and for this reason, um, if you want to have a certain magnification that uh, you know, your microscope does not have, you might have problems uh, getting replacement objectives unless big unless unless you buy the infinity microscope from a large manufacturer okay olympus Zeiss, nikon leica already mentioned those okay because they are making for research uh, for 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 industry for quality control for and so on um, and um They've got everything that you want to have. Um, I think I don't need to mention that the cost can be astronomical. Okay. Um, a, a decent, uh, yeah, decent uh, microscope objective from one of those companies can cost uh, thousands, um, a few thousand euros or dollars. One objective alone. Okay. Spe some special ones. Not, not all of them are that expensive, but you have to calculate several hundred dollars or euros for one objective alone. Yeah. They're not manufactured in that large uh, quantities. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So the target group is, is quite different. So, uh, this is, um, some advantages and disadvantages. Um, I want to mention some, something else here. Look at this over here. This is a 160 millimeter objective. And, um, so is, I don't know. Let's take another one of the same, uh, same mag. This one, this one here is as well. Can you exchange them? Well, um, the mechanical tube length, 160, is the same. However, this one is a so-called a short barrel objective, um, also known with a so-called, um, yeah, it, um, this is called a distance. How do you call it? How do you, how do they call it? A conjugate distance, it's called. The, this has a conjugate distance of 185 millimeters, and this one has a conjugate distance of 195 millimeters. Okay, forget about this. <laughs> it basically means that this objective is one centimeter larger than this one, and therefore this one has to be lower um, yeah, than this one. Um, so are you able to exchange them? Uh, it kind of depends. Um, I tried to put uh, those short barrel objectives into another microscope, and I could not raise the stage enough, okay? It, it would get stuck, you know, uh, because um, it kind of expected the objective to be larger. But uh, mounting um, a large um, objective into a microscope with a, which designed for the short barrel one might work. Okay, so it depends a little bit um, about the, how far are you able to move the the, uh, the, the stage of the microscope um, because there is one centimeter difference. So are they compatible? Uh, optically, yes, um, they fit, but uh, yeah, you got to try it out. Okay, um, so they are much cheaper, of course, um, and it's why they this one here was found on an introductory microscope, but they're pretty okay, actually. Uh, when I say pretty okay, I always compare this with uh, what was available, I don't know, 20 years ago when, or 30 years ago, um, and uh, a lot has happened since then. And nowadays, you can get also quite uh, cheap or relatively low cost microscopes with a pretty surprising decent quality. And this is because uh, they're pro yeah, they're making those, uh, those objectives here. So look, uh, the one that I talked about over here, look, if you could just compare the size here, you know, the diameter of the threading is much smaller. Yeah. And also this one over here, this one here again has the same size. Yeah. But the diameter here of the threading is much smaller than this one over here. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're not compatible. And th these are objectives of introductory and children's microscopes, not toy microscopes, but introductory and children's microscopes. And uh, they basically yeah, have objectives that are yet smaller. And uh, therefore it is not possible uh, to upgrade a introductory microscope with uh, yeah, those larger objectives, yeah, which have a so-called RMS threading. And, and you 
it wouldn't be worth it probably anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, as a matter of fact, another issue with those is, is that um, it's kind of difficult, or at least I've never seen a place where they actually sold uh, individual objectives um, for those introductory microscopes. And so, um, yeah, and they're so cheap anyway, the whole microscope might just cost around 100 euros or dollars, a little bit more, maybe 150. Um, so it's really not worth uh, to establish a market simply for those uh, objectives alone. And so I have not seen them sold separately, but uh, I had to detach them from the microscope. Yeah? So these uh, tiny ones are for children's and introductory microscopes, yeah? not compatible again. Yeah? So let's move on a little bit. Um, I've got over here, yeah, these are, that's uh, an Olympus one. Yeah, it's an old Olympus from the 1970s, 1980s. Um, yeah, it's just like this one over here, a short barrel objective with a conjugate distance of 185 millimeters. Yeah, so um, if you want to get replacement objectives uh, yeah, for these, it might be a little bit difficult yeah, because um, all modern or many or most modern microscope objectives are, are of the larger size. Yeah. So let's move on. There's something else I want to show you. Where is this? I have to find the objective first. Ah, yeah. A. 10 PL, achromatic objective, uh, 10 times magnification, positive low. <laughs> what we're talking about here is a so-called uh, uh, yeah, uh, phase contrast um, objective. And uh, phase contrast is a technique which allows you to see uh, objects that are very low in contrast. For example, bacteria, very difficult to observe otherwise. But with phase contrast, you're able to see the transparent bacteria um, darker. Yeah, on, on a bright background. So it kind of converts differences in refractive index of the specimen into brightness. Um, yeah, Fritz Zernicke, um, a Danish physicist, won the Nobel Prize for developing uh, phase contrast microscopy, which allows you to observe um, yeah, live organisms without staining. So no chemical treatment necessary, and you're able to see structures that normally you would not be able to see. You can already see already here, when I look through the back is, uh, here, is, is you see a ring. Because on one of the lens elements, they, um, they put a ring here. This is the so-called the phase ring. And as a matter of fact, I somewhere have another one over here. I think this is also another 10 times. Ah, yeah, see, um, this, it, there's also a phase ring over here. And if you put them side to side by side, you're going to see that the phase rings um, have a different diameter and a different size. So why is this significant? It means that those two objectives are not compatible. Okay. Um, in what way? Because you cannot simply use the phase contrast objective on its own, but you need to use it in conjunction with a phase contrast condenser. I brought one over here. Okay, so from the top, it looks like this. It goes on the bottom of the microscope. And then you can rotate this. Just want to show you. I'm going to make a separate video on, on, on condensers, okay? You can rotate this. Yeah. Yeah. D for dark field. This is now, um, yeah, this is a uh, bright field. And over here, this is a uh, phase contrast for the 10 times uh, objective. And then there's one phase contrast for 40 times. Okay, so there's a number 40 printed on here. If you turn it around over here, you're going to see that there is a so-called, it's called a phase annulus. Okay, it's a special filter. This here is a dark field filter. Okay, this one over here is uh, just for bright field. And right now I rotate it. Uh, yeah, this, uh, which one? The one for 40 times, uh, yeah, in, into position for 10 times. It looks like this, yeah. As a different one, and the it's it's a, it's a yeah a small ring which is on here, um, and the ring that you have over here on, on in the phase um, phase annulus, and the ring that you have uh, over here in the microscope objective, they must match, <laughs> yeah. Um, and what I had uh, when I first converted one of my microscopes uh, to phase contrast, I got I went to eBay and I bought some secondhand phase contrast objectives. But, uh, and then I had, of course, also one of those phase contrast condensers around and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it, did, it didn't match, okay? So I, it didn't work. Yeah? So I had to basically get a new condenser and a new and new objectives and then it worked. Yeah? So you see, it's a little bit complicated. So for this reason, when you want to buy phase contrast um, objectives, always make sure that you also buy the appropriate phase contrast condenser or at least the appropriate yeah, um, phase, uh, phase uh, annually, um, as they're called. Yeah? Um, over here, yeah, you have to buy them as well, um, and uh, they have to be compatible to the objective that you use. Yeah? So that is a, a quickly, um, yeah, um, a way of uh, determining uh, whether um, yeah you have a phase contrast uh, objective, and uh, yeah, over here for example, yeah, you see that 
Yeah, the other one, which is not a phase contrast objective, just a regular one, does not have this phase ring in, in there. Yeah? So um, I would say a phase contrast, uh, nice to have, uh, but uh, again, drives up the price uh, considerably. I, I'm a little bit surprised always because uh, making this phase ring cannot be that expensive. Otherwise, those two microscope objectives are pretty much identical anyway. <laughs> so I wonder why uh, the phase contrast one is so much more expensive. I think, again, it's a question of price politics and because they're not manufactured um, in, in very large quantities. Okay, so I already mentioned and talked about the so-called the short barrel objectives. Okay, not to be confused with the objectives uh, of for the children's microscopes. I mean, they're also kind of short. Okay, but uh, they basically are an entirely different standard here. But the short barrel objectives, like the one over here, this is a ten times, and this is a yeah 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 also ten times. Um, uh, yeah, is a, a centimeter around a centimeter shorter. Yeah? So be careful um, when you. Uh, wants to exchange them that it actually fits. Um, optically, it would fit, okay? Um, also, mechanically, you can put it in, but if uh, their stage has a certain limit of movement, then it might be an issue here, okay? Try it out. So, another thing that I have here. Ah, here it is. You see this front part? Okay. And this is uh, what you call a so-called a spring-loaded objective. And this uh, is a protective feature. So when you crash the objective into the slide because you're not careful, then the front part of the objective will retract. Okay, so this uh, protects the front lens of the objective, but also, of course, your, your specimen slide. Um, yeah, nice to have again. Um, it, it shouldn't happen. It all happens all the time because that you crash, especially students crash into the slide. But one of the things that you have to be careful here with those uh, objectives is, is look, because there is a gap here on the side, especially when you clean the objective, which you shouldn't do unless it's really necessary. Don't touch the front part and there's no reason for it to become dirty. Yeah? Um, so don't uh, don't clean unless necessary, but there's a danger, of course, of liquid running in, into the objective here. So that's a, a, a disadvantage here. So you got to be kind of careful. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, I also want to show you um, something else, a little video over here that I made. And this here is um, yeah, a 60 times objective with a so-called correction collar. A correction collar allows you to adjust to the thickness of the, um, of the cover glass. Yeah. So um, yeah, 0 0.17 is the standard thickness, but some cover glasses are a little bit thicker or thinner and you can adjust that and this improves again the resolution. Um, needless to say that uh, this uh, again drives up the price of the objective uh, considerably. Yeah. So um, yes, uh, when you buy uh, microscope objectives, make sure that you buy objectives of the same series. I mean, I already talked about the fact that you're not able to mix infinity with 160 millimeters, but you should also not mix, let's say, objectives that um, you know, look like this, the black ones with those that look sil silver. Okay, why not? Because um, even though uh, they're all 160 millimeters, even though they're all able to fit, um, it could be that if you switch from one objective to the next one, when you change magnification, that it's out of focus. Okay, because uh, the objectives are designed uh, for different distance. Yeah? So this means that there might be refocusing necessary and especially at the higher magnifications is the danger, of course, also that you kind of crash the front part then um, into the microscope slide. Um, I have done this. I have mixed uh, objectives uh, on one of my microscopes uh, with uh, from different uh, manufacturers, but then um, I tested this out and then I know that it's going to be out of focus and I know that I have to rotate the fine focus knob two and a half rotations and then it's going to be again in focus. Okay. And I also remembered into which direction I have to rotate this. Yeah. But generally for beginners, not advisable to mix um, um, objectives of, um, of a different, um, of a different series. So let's say that you have a four times, 10 times, 40 times objective of this series and you want to have now a 20 times and a 60 times objective as well. Then um, how do you know it's from the same series? Well, um, you just look at it well, it looks the same. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, really the the only thing that I can advise you to do. And, and objectives can be bought relatively cheaply on, on ID Express. And if you have really real doubts, what you can do is is you can actually exchange them all um, of the objectives at the same time. Okay, uh, that's also a possibility. Um, yeah. So um, as I mentioned, uh, this is a possibility that you uh, then exchange the whole series. But yeah, I would say. There is this uh, sometimes the tendency to always wanting to upgrade the microscope, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice to do that. But in reality, there the limits of upgradability um, 
you cannot upgrade <laughs> too many things on a microscope. My, my advice would be also focus a little bit more on the observation of the environment and, and of nature. Yeah. Um, get yourself the objectives that you want, but then, yeah, there's no point in, in trying to, in, in trying to, uh, to always try exchanging objectives and trying out whether the other one's better than the previous one. Yeah. Of course, if you want to do that, it's part of the hobby. That's fine. But I, I would probably say that you're not going to see so much of a, of a significance of a difference. Oh yeah. Before I forget, huh. Um, also something I wanted to talk about, some objectives are called plan objectives. And plan objectives um, are again a little bit better in the sense that they allow you to give, they give you a sharp image all the way from the center all the way to the edge. Um, and uh, this is uh, quite uh, nice to have, especially when you want to do photography work uh, using a microscope, um, so that not only the center is in focus, but also the edges. However, this depends a lot also on the um, field of view that your camera has. Okay, so um, if you're only taking a picture of the central part of the field of view, you don't see the blurry part on the outside because it's cropped away. So it doesn't always give you a benefit. And um, I did compare a little bit the, the plan objectives with the non-plan of objectives. And yeah, there is a little bit of a, there is a difference, but um, not, not, not as big always as you would expect it to be. Yeah. Um, so, and sometimes uh, if uh, you have a, an eyepiece, which is not a wide field eyepiece, but only one which um, you know, takes a small part uh, of the center, you might not even be able to see that the edges are blurry. Okay. Um, so you see, it's a, uh, yeah, you might be under some circumstances, you might be a little bit disappointed um, with uh, some of the objectives because you feel that you, or you hope to, to be able to greatly improve the image quality and then the improvement is only marginal. Okay. Um, but then again, some people need that improvement, especially if they're doing a lot of photography work. Um, and then you have to simply invest uh, in, into more expensive uh, objective. Yeah. And then you have no choice anyway. Yeah. So this is uh, basically almost it. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm not able to see from the surf, from the outside here, which uh, overall has a better image quality. Um, this is another thing that I want to mention briefly before I stop because I've been talking already quite long. Um, is is that generally a microscope that have those silver um, objectives um, are yeah, these objectives are much cheaper and are also not quite as crisp and clear as the black ones. Okay, but sometimes you will only notice this if you have a side by side comparison. They're still pretty okay. Okay, um, and, uh, make no mistake about this, but they are actually much cheaper. Um, also, the microscopes are a little bit cheaper, and the more expensive microscopes, they tend to have the black ones. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I do feel that they have a slightly better um, image quality, but uh, you'd have to do a side by side comparison sometimes uh, to be able to see that. Yeah, yeah, so just a, a short, uh, yeah, final comment. Um, and, uh, yeah, when you want to buy microscope objectives, um, just, uh, yeah, be aware that, uh, yeah, they are compatible with your microscope, but they're compatible with the other uh, objectives that you have. Um, and, uh, just, uh, think a little bit uh, of whether it might be worth it. Uh, there is one recommendation that I do have. This is if you have an oil immersion objective, then a uh, um, hundred times oil immersion objective, and, and uh, it's difficult to use because you have to use immersion oil and so on. It might be worth actually exchanging it to a 60 times objective. I already made several videos about that. People have been contacting me, where can I get a 60 times objective? And then unfortunately um, it was not available. Um, so you have to um, maybe um, yeah, do a little bit of, of uh, yeah, research first of whether replacement objectives are, are available. Uh, and I'm talking here now about the low cost objectives like we have over here, because if you buy your microscope from one of the high end manufacturers, uh, then they have, of course, uh, a lot of the things in stock anyway, at least from the modern versions. Um, yeah, recently when I contacted uh, Olympus, yeah, because I wanted to have a replacement objective for my older Olympus microscope and they were not manufactured anymore for many years already. Yeah? So you have to shop on the second hand market and then it's also not quite cheap all the time. I think I'm just going to leave it at that now. Uh, do uh, leave your comments behind uh, if you have any questions. Um, I wish you uh, now all the best. And uh, of course, there might be follow up videos as well. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.